We're talking about the best selling cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Under five dollars or less. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. Um, off the gate, Super Polymerization has now snuck up to two dollars. Uh, it's literally about three. Let's see, two sixty-three dollars. This is a really fantastic card. Uh, Konami hasn't really given off any indications at all whatsoever that they're going to uh, ban this card. Um, and in all honesty, um, it's tricky when you're looking for what's the best, you know, sort of like best um, penny stock version of super polarization that you would like to pull the trigger for. It actually might be the Monstrous Revenge Secret Rare that just came out. Um, the fact that it's been able to kind of maintain a relatively valuable price with the rest of the Super Polymerizations and it's the newest. I think it's a really good indication that going forward that could be one of the be better selling versions of Super Polymerization um, going forward. Uh, I don't think we've talked too much about this. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I've talked about the punk stuff very often on this uh, channel. And um, a lot of it is, the main reason is because punk has just kind of been all over the place. Like, sometimes punk is um, like a tier one and a half tier two meta deck. Uh, sometimes punk is like rogue uh punk's never really been that great um and punk the thing my thing also too with punk is like it usually needs a companion right like it's usually like adventurer punk or um i don't know um punk gold pride yeah gold pride's been kind of the main uh running mate for punk but punk's a very interesting en engine and when we look at it um, I mean, okay, yes, the Megaton conversation gets brought up again, uh, one day, you know, hopefully soon, uh, well, because usually the Megatons, I don't know when they're supposed to come out, but they usually come out in September, right, so ideally, we're within a few months, um, from the Megatons, and we'll know, okay, these cards are in the Megatons, these cards are not. Uh, until then, the, the Megaton question keeps coming in, and, and this deck could go from what I feel is relatively budget to um, actually, like, insanely budget. Kind of like what happened with Virtual World last year. Because Virtual World felt like it was in a very uh, similar spot. Um, when I look at, now, Punk deck on eBay... Um, 40 bucks. Um, let's see if anything is missing because there's always feels like there's something missing on most cases, but you know, just to double check uh, one Foxy Tune, one Ogre Dance, and those are this one and this one. Um, and then I think three of everything else. Yeah, that appears to be the case. By the way, you also get. The um this little psychic whirler package, right? For the free rank threes, you get an omega and a zeta. Um, and when you know when we're looking at this, I think this is a full deck, full forty. Let me see if I can find the um description. Yeah, it's a full forty plus an eight card extra deck. So we're looking at forty eight cards for forty dollars, so less than a dollar a card. Um, and when we look at okay, so we're missing these two, right? Um, most of them are maybe a little cheaper than that, right? And and hey, this is the type of thing where like maybe you go to your locals, um, you decide to open up some packs, right? You open up a pack of I don't know. Um, Monstrous Revenge, right? Um, or maybe not even Monstrous Revenge, right? Because that's where punk stuff just came out, you know. Um, the Monstrous Revenge hasn't really been, like, that great of a set for the... Uh, it's been a great set for, you know, the budget players, but it hasn't really been that great of a set for, like, um, the big lottery ticket chase cards. Like, you open, like, a pack of Tactical Masters, right? 
and you know you end up pulling a uh, collector's rare lovely right you can use that lovely to trade for a punk deck right that's kind of my thought process with that right especially because the adventure package is relatively cheap too um we kind of talked about adventure a little bit already that's not bad though that's not bad though for a trap card it's not bad uh the, the issue is though like and i'm debating you guys can let me know in the comments down below like if you'd want me to do like a video on what makes a card bad what makes a card good just by looking at it right because i have like a list together and i kind of like stopped putting it together and i was thinking about it and i was like ah, yes so no maybe so um man if this was a normal spell it would be at least three or four dollars but the fact that it's a trap it just oh it just makes it so much worse um could still be okay though um because you know hero players don't really care too much about whether or not a card is good um they usually care a little bit more about like what a card can do regardless of how good it is right like when people are building a rogue deck, a lot of times, you know, especially because it's a little more casual player base, so they'll end up leaning more towards, like, the highest potential of a card versus, like, like, the, essentially, like, the lowest potential of a card, like, what is its best play, right? Um, and so that could actually be a really good buy at just a dollar, right? Uh, you know, you pick up a dollar, just see, maybe it'll be five bucks, you know, in a couple months, and, you know, you, you, you can, at the very least, use that to pick up some packs and, and go from there, right, uh, play that game. I think Danger Nessie, as a, less than a dollar is huge, that's crazy, um, yeah, and obviously those are gone, but you can still get a five at a dollar twenty-eight, and that's kind of crazy, um, don't care about that. Um, <laughs> with that quality, that would just qualify. Actually, I think four would qualify for free shipping. Um, what is in the cart again? I always forget. Um, oh yeah, this whole, there was a deck that I was looking at, um, uh, that I was thinking about getting. That's right. And then these evenly matches. Yeah. And then we're so close. Um, to removing all this stuff. I really like the um, Infotrack Machina, like the machine type deck. I really like that type of stuff. But anyway, um, it's really fun and it's relatively budget. Uh, so yeah, so you get four, so you qualify for free shipping. Um, you can get, you know, Danger Nessie essentially for a dollar twenty-eight, right? Um, before taxes. And then it could be like a three dollar card. I mean, I look at I went too far back. Other versions of Danger Nessie. I think there's three total. Well, it's four. Three others. Uh, the Eldorado is in a dollar. Uh, the originals five dollars. Yeah, the originals. The originals more than five. The originals about six or seven. Um, and yes, there's not really like Danger Dark World. Obviously, the best deck that runs Danger right now. But Danger is a really solid engine, so there's a definite possibility that at some point in its lifetime, Danger will come back, right? Especially just n merely off the fact that there's two cards still on the limited list, right? So that, you know, those cards coming back to three in and of itself could make Danger Nessie a very interesting card. Um, we talked about this card a little bit, and we talked about a lot of these cards, and that's sometimes that's what happens, you know, um... It's it's in it's in it's in waves, right? Uh, you know, sometimes there's like a new set next week, new set next week, new set, right? Uh, and then there's a ban list, and then there's a structure deck, and then there's another new set, and then you know there's a crazy tech, and right, the the, the market's fluctuating, and sometimes the market gets a little dry, it gets a little stale, but that's what page two is for, right? Um, I've really been messing around with this card trying to figure it out um 
this I feel like this is its biggest issue. Also, the fact that it's not a hero, so it can't be summoned off of Miracle Fusion. Um, but like, it has a crazy interaction with. I don't think it's this card, but this card's okay. Oh, it's definitely not that card. Um, but it has a crazy interaction with an element. There's an elemental hero that says when it's special summoned, um, your opponent can't activate any cards, right? And that's just crazy. But for this to get its effect, it has to destroy a monster by battle, right? And what else is weird is that, like, you can choose, if this card is special summoned, you can choose one dragon monster in your graveyard and, and all monsters your opponent controls with equal or less than uh, level to that get destroyed right so it's like I need to destroy something by battle to get its second effect right which is fusion summon an elemental hero ignoring his summoning conditions but I just destroyed all my opponent's monsters right so it's, it's tricky it's, it's a tricky card but I've been messing around with it 3500 attack um, it's pretty interesting and I definitely like and I don't think it's a terrible buy at all if I'm being honest with you um Chaos, God, what has this card been doing? I, th I know we looked at it for a while. How long has this been out? So it's, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have a lot of fluctuation, right? The lowest it's been since release is, I think, 213. I think we just saw it. Yeah, 213. And the highest it ever got to is 471. I mean, that's a 250 fluctuation. That's not really much at all, right? There's only two versions, though, of this card. And there's really only one card that does what this card does, right? Which is that you can, you know, use a monster your opponent controls to link someone, right? So it's a free out, right? But, you you know, you're not using a kaiju. You're not using um, Santa Claus, Lava Golem, what have you. Um, and then you obviously negate the effects of all face-up monsters uh, that your opponent controls. And then it's unaffected by uh, activated effects unless it targets. And I just... I feel like if it didn't have this clause, it would be so much better, right? Um, this is such a fantastic card, um, but good players know you're about to make it, right? Good players can play around it, so maybe that's why this card hasn't been going up crazy amounts in value, um, but it's starting to get closer and closer to its lowest point which was 214 so if you can get it for 250 kind of where it's sitting at right now or less you might want to pull the trigger on the off chance you know you catch it back on the uh the, the, the swing back upward um just something to keep in mind uh because it's like i said not a lot of cards do that specific thing um i know there's like there's a card in cyber i think it's like cyber tech overhead something i don't know um, that can use machine monsters, right? Um, but yeah, that takes a little bit of setup, though, for that as well. Um, let's check out this card. This card, where I was wrong, you know, and y you, you only know the information that's in front of you. I had no idea when the Spirit Charmer Structure Deck came out, because, like, when the Spirit Charmer Structure Deck came out, way all over a year ago like this was like a five dollar card right it was literally the reason to get this structure because this structure is not really that great like if we look at this structure deck geki valor i mean like that can't be right that's gotta be a misprint i don't know i don't know where the 299 is coming from oh okay it's like 13 bucks which by the way side tangent the fact that this structure deck costs 13 dollars should tell you all you need to know about your ROI, return on investment for structure decks. Like, if you're able to get it for, like, 10 or $11, like, you can just get, like, 40 of them. I mean, that's $400. But, like, you can just get 40 of them and then just wait. And even the bad ones in a year or two are going to be worth, like, 13 Right? I mean, Regeki, Valor Twisters, Dark Ruler, um, Book of Eclipse, D-Barrier, Sekka is okay this archetype in here is terrible honestly like I'm, I'm sorry if you like it but this archetype is terrible right um back to dark ruler no more though i had no idea when this came out that like this was going to come out and then this was going to come out you know and like i said we are only presented with the information that we have access to 
um, Prismatic Secret Dark Rulers um, are still selling okay. They're actually not a penny stock, right? And then you look at the, the next, the only other non-common rarity is the Ultra Rare from the um, other Megatons. It's, an, it's interesting, right? And it's still, like, regardless of how many options, right, um, there are for Dark Ruler No More, it's still a really good card. And if we look at, like, a card like Raigeki, for example, I didn't mean to click on that article. I don't know why I clicked on that article. We actually can do it like this. If we look at a card like Raigeki, right, so that would be, we can actually do it this way. Go here, and then go here. Raigeki has so many printings. I mean, you know, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 printings. The cheapest printing of Raigeki, I think we just saw it. I think it's that Spirit Charmer Structure Deck printing of Raigeki. And just being honest, like, they're still selling for about a dollar, right? And you go, well, Raigeki's a better card than Dark Ruler. I don't think so. I think, I think Dark Ruler no more has more game states where it's better than Raigeki than Raigeki has game states where it's better than Dark Ruler no more. And so the fact that 13 copies of Dark Ruler or Raigeki are available and the cheapest one's a dollar, that should tell you whereabouts we're at with, you know, Dark Ruler no more. Because at the end of the day, this structure deck just recently came out. The Alba Strike structure deck came out even more recently. And then the Megaton version um, which I believe is the version that is in, at the very least, the top 50 best-selling cards under $5 or less. Right, yeah, it's right here. I mean, it's beating Iblis, it's beating Fusion Destiny, it's beating Linkage, right? Remember the Sky Striker hype? And that's died down, right? And there's a reason for that, it's, and it's because, not even because people want this card to buy or sell right it's because it's just a good card right i and like droplets has come out right geki has come back there might be another card that's just like this crazy board breaking spell um but i don't think dark rule no more is going anywhere anytime soon so I actually really like Dark Rule No More as an investment, um, but you're definitely gonna have to sit and wait, as I have been. I have been sitting on my Dark Rulers for quite some time. But let me know what you guys think in those comments down below with the best selling cards under five dollars or less that you are interested in. Make sure you guys click that like button, show your support for the channel, subscribe for more content. But most importantly of all, have a good day.